Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of the Nirvana Sessions. Uh, today we are streaming live from the StereoNet Australian Hi-Fi show in Melbourne. And we're honoured to have as a guest uh, Mr Andre Gill from AG Lifter Isolation Products in New Zealand. Uh, Andre, uh, welcome to uh, Nirvana Sound. Thank you. And uh, thank you for making the, uh, the trip from New Zealand to be part of the show and support the industry. I personally know what a joy it is to know you, but I'd love to share this with the rest of the world today. Uh, but before we start, just checking, uh, being from New Zealand, um, do I need to put the word hey after every sentence? No, just bar. Just bar. Okay, wonderful. We'll get to that in yeah. a moment. Um, now, your, your name is Andre Gill. Yes. Am I right in saying that the AG in AG Lifter stands for Ask Gel? That's a very slippery comment. It is, isn't, isn't it? it? <laughs> it well, is. I couldn't think of anything funnier, Andre. But anyway, but we, we, to be serious, though, you've been actually uh, uh, in the engineering industry for 35 years. You've got a lot of experience. Yes. Um, what on earth possessed you to leave a perfectly sensible job and get into the murky waters of high-end audio? Well, we've got two businesses, so we still have the core business. Yes. Which supports, which does support the audio business, mm -hmm. um, because we, you need an engineering facility to f facilitate and manufacture all the dreams that I make up every day. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> well, I know having known yourself and your partner, Vanessa, I know that you are definitely very uh, passionate about music. Yes. Uh, tell us how you came uh, to design your first isolation foot. Well, it was a little bit of an accident. Uh, we're on holidays, uh, one one Christmas holidays, and I drew, drew a crazy sketch mm -hmm. and went back home, developed it, manufactured it out of what I could see on the steel rack, out of implements and in substrates I thought would work together. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted a, a a device where you could change the bearing to to change the the footer. <clears throat> Sorry, and um, I, I therefore made three of the items. Yes. Took it home, and as a, you know, your regular audio file, I had a drawer full of things that I'd bought in the past, and I compared them to them, and and it was it was better. For some reason, the drawer was full because the devices would lower the noise floor, make it clearer, but remove the musicality and the weight and the. Okay. It's you a know, common comment from a lot of audio files. Yeah, and it just became boring to listen to, so I removed them. Mm -hmm. um, so I therefore went forward and, and made 55 changes to the foot. Okay. And, and today we have the finished item. Yes. And now it's part of something bigger. Yeah, okay. Well, do you have an isolation foot fetish? Look, I, I I do. I'd like to say that I suck my isolation feet, but I don't. I've got to be careful every time I ask this gentleman a funny question. <laughs> so, how does the uh, the ball in cup style of isolation technology work? Uh, AG Lifter were not the first people to to do that. I mean, Steel Points, now the companies have been yes. using something similar for a very long time. Yes. Uh, however, uh, I really do feel that your the sound that the AG Lifter products produce is uh, I wouldn't say superior, but it's it, it's superb. Uh, yes. how, how have you? How does that work? And how have you made changes to that to get the sound that you get? Okay, the, the bearing is only part of it because the bearing attracts the resonance. Mm -hmm. Now, the body, the body material is very important. It dictates what the whole sound of the, of the foot's going to be like. Yeah. Um, the, the real secret source is within the, the nitrile, the nitrile in the center. Now, the nitriles has been carefully developed, so it's harder on one side and softer on the other. Mm -hmm. So it's got a dual shore hardness, we call it. Um, this allows the foot to have a wider range of of, of dampening. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. And at the base of the foot, it's a five-piece foot, and mm -hmm. so it's not one material. We're using different materials to do the job. Okay. There's a a grub screw at the bottom which tensions the rubber. Okay. And that gives us further adjustment. And, and the different materials uh, have different densities. 
which I think also have different resonant absorbing properties. So yes. you're using the different materials to get a wider range of absorption. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. Well, some isolation rack companies uh, shy away from using perspex uh, for their shelving. Yes. Can you tell us why, with all the research you've done, you've chosen perspex yes. in your racks? Well, it, it works in our design. Mm -hmm. It's easily obtainable. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it has a sort of aesthetic look where you're looking through the rack mm -hmm. and your equipment is seemingly levitating on it. Yes. Okay. So we, we like that. Mm -hmm. um, and because it's a man-made material, we don't use any organic materials mm -hmm. because they change. Okay. Like man-made materials are just the same. More all stable? The time. More sort stable. Of a, a, atomically stable. Yeah, in yeah. all year round. They're not hydroscopic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we steer away from timbers. Okay. Uh, because timber is hydroscopic mm -hmm. and it will change its sound during the course of a year. Yeah, it can even humidity. change according to humidity and lots of other... Each tree yeah. sounds different. Yeah. Crazy yeah, yeah, as it may yeah. seem. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Um, so, and, yeah. and each perspex tree sounds the same. It does. It's very clear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, we uh, without in in this in this particular discussion, we're not going to go into the science of resonance because it's it's quite a, a huge topic. But we all know that uh, electric electric components or electronic components like DACs amplifiers, they produce um, a, a, a multitude of resonances across lots of frequencies. We know that they interact with each other, they interact with the shelf, the floor. However, we also know that there are resonances introduced from the environment, surrounding environment. Yes. Tell us how your racks deal with uh, these energies. Right. Well, there's layers of dampening, decoupling and coupling through yes. the rack. So we, we go through a simple exercise of using the shelf, the dampening foot, the mm -hmm. frame. Now, the frame's another secret source. This is a frame which is made out of aluminium alloy, mm -hmm. but it's constructed in a way that it, it is adjustable. Okay. So we, we can tune the rack. It's like a tuning fork, mm -hmm. if you like. Mm -hmm. um, now we're able to actually set the tune for your equipment in your room. Okay. It, it, which goes another step further. Well, that was actually my next question because you are the only rack manufacturer that I've, to the best of my knowledge in the world, that uses the term frame tensioning. Yes. Uh, so tell us, tell everyone a little bit more about what is frame frame tensioning, and how does that relate to customizing the rack for the particular uh, okay. system and room? Okay. Well, the by shifting the tension tension on the frame, as you put it. Yes. What we're doing is we're actually setting the resonant frequency of the frame. Mm -hmm. So therefore the equipment is, is either getting more resolution, mm -hmm. more weight, so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Yeah. So in each direction you move it. And you can actually move things in two directions to get a mixture of both sure. things. So we know that when we put dulcet uh, isolation devices under a component, you can put the dulcet under the power supply area. Correct. You can put it in different areas and it makes a difference. And you're telling me that where you actually place the location of the support yes. actually makes a difference too. Yes, Absolutely. of course. Yeah. So you can move the dull set mm. foot forward, mm -hmm. forward or rear, yeah. and it makes a change. And you can shift the rails here further together and further apart. That's right. And okay. that also has an effect. So by balancing the two adjustments, you can actually tune it. Mm. Because no two components have the same resonance profile, right? No, they don't, but we, we do factory set them when, when it leaves. Yes. And a, a lot of times customers don't change it because okay. it just sounds great straight right, off the bat. Right. But you have those problem rooms and yes. you know, problem combinations. Yes. Um, you know, we, we, all, we all hate to admit it, but we've all made that mistake. Yes. And, um, and therefore, we can do something about yeah. it. Yeah, that's wonderful. I think I really commend you on that strategy because most people believe that uh, if, if they invest in a, uh, a good rack, then they just sit and forget. They don't realise that you could actually tune that rack to get an even more optimised result. So yes. I really commend you for that. It's a fantastic feature. Um, now, in my experience, your isolation products work beautifully. 
However, I've got a bit of a personal question. Can they help isolate me from my mother-in-law? Well, you could do if you played a really loud music in your room and that would get rid of her. Okay, I think <laughs> I've tried that. <laughs> You're a, a relatively new company in the world of high-end audio. Mm. What are your ambitions for the next few years? It's to continue to grow and get our name no, more well known. Yes. Um, we're, we're beginning to get there now. We've, we've been mm. offshore a little bit this year mm -hmm. and we're really enjoying it. My wife and I are traveling the world and, and uh, loving the journey uh, because we love music so much and yeah. I love the passion and the hobby. Yes. It, it, it doesn't seem like work. One of the things that I, uh, in, in my experience in audio, one of the things that I have um, really come to admire is that, yes, there are large established companies that are the, the sort of poster boys for audio, but often the best work is found in the smaller boutique companies from um, relatively unknown areas. So for me, it was a delight to see a company in New Zealand kind of come out of nowhere. And when we tested your racks, they were just giant killers. So it's one oh, of the one, one, wonderful um, surprises uh, in audio that I really enjoy. So um, I'm going to ask you 10 quick questions now. We're, we're up to that point. Um, uh, 10 quick questions and 10 relatively quick answers just to see what's on your no. mind. Uh, are you ready? Well, I hope so. <laughs> All right. Well, what is your favorite word? Mm, dinner's ready. <laughs> I think that's just become I just, mine. <laughs> I, I, I just love my food. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> what is your... Oh, you said that you become a bit hangry if you get hungry. Uh, I do. I'm not a good person no, when okay. I'm hungry. Okay, well, let's keep... Uh, let's, it is near dinner order now. Order some food, please. Okay. Uh, what is your least favourite word? Vegan, probably. <laughs> oh, no. I think you've just offended someone in the room. <laughs> no, not, not really. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, if you could use one word to describe a great sounding system, uh, what would that word be? Natural. Yeah, natural. That's such a good explanation, actually. I, I agree with you. Mm. That's how I describe some of the best sounding products. Um, mm. What do you prefer listening to, um, analog or digital? Look, um, I've got a foot in both camps, but I've got a love affair with vinyl. You've got an isolation foot in both camps? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. You love vinyl. What sound or noise do you love? Oh, I just love the, the sound of crackling steaks on the barbecue. <laughs> okay. I'm sensing a theme here. I think our vegan person just ran out the door. <laughs> Um, what sound or noise do you hate? Oh, God, the Cockney accent, I think. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Says a New Zealander. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what is your proudest uh, achievement? Well, marrying my wife, I think. She mm -hmm. put me on the stra straight and narrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, having met Vanessa, I tend to agree with you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She's, she's very patient. Yes. Very patient. Well, um, if you could have, this is a very difficult question to answer. If you could have just one album, just keep one album, and that's mm. all for the rest of your life, which one would it be? It would have to be Eugene's version of Led Zeppelin. Stairway <laughs> right. Um I've never seen a stand-up ovation in this room. Yes. We saw it today. We had, you know, yeah. we, Every time Eugene played that, played that, everyone just clapped. It was incredible, wasn't I it? I know. I just couldn't get over it. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'll buy it off you. <laughs> hundred bucks. <laughs> Come on. I don't think you're going to have much luck. No. <laughs> um, so if money was no object, how would you spend your time? I think in my listening room. Yeah? Yeah. I'd invest heinous amounts of money on gear. <laughs> yes. Just just deck the whole thing out. Yeah. And I'm living my dream. Yeah. yeah. And going to audio shows and catching up with you guys, of course. Um, and all and all the friends we meet all over the world through audio, we just love it. That sounds yeah. like a fantastic life. 
It's not bad, eh? Yeah, it's it not is. bad. On cooking, there's the A, by the way. Remember the A uh, in cooking yeah. barbecues. You know, we've got to do that. Yeah, and I'll put some Brussels sprouts on okay. or something like that. That's for Sophie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro broccolini maybe even. Yeah. Well, finally, uh, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Hmm, that's really difficult because I feel like I'm doing what I really want to do in life. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to make something up, but I think I'm just doing the perfect thing. You're an engineer, so I'm sure you'll be always creating. Yeah, look, yeah, that's my thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and as you know, I hook up with other engineers and we yes. talk our nerdy things. And Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm really but glad. we love creating stuff. I'm glad you said that because I think um, all of us would agree that we would love you to do nothing more than what you're doing right now because you're doing such a good job. Oh, thank As you. I said earlier, your products uh, have sort of come out of nowhere into the consciousness of the, the, the of certainly the Australian and New Zealand sphere and now beginning to become discovered by the, by the rest of the world. And you're in Munich um, this year and I heard a lot of great feedback from people that discovered AG Lifter. Uh, so congratulations on a, f a wonderful product. And I hope that yourself and Vanessa continue to live this perfect life that you describe. So thank you very much for coming. I think we should have a little bit more wine. I do. Uh, and uh, cheers, cheers to you, my, my friend. friend. And thank you. Cheers.